I'm here. Whether anyone else is or not, I'm going to start and I'm just going to repeat a few of the exercises we did yesterday with the waist before looking at today's subject, which is balance. So I'm just going to repeat those exercises yesterday for the waist turning side to side. And whilst we're doing that, I'm just going to say a couple of words in Spanish for anyone who's arrived. Bienvenidos cualquier visitante que está pasando por mi Facebook Live de España. Vamos a hacer algunas cosas nuevas la semana que viene en español, esta semana en inglés. Pero facilísimo de seguir. Hi and welcome to this second of five sessions this week about the most basic ideas behind Tai Chi. Yesterday we looked at flow and the waist. Today I'm going to be looking at um, balance. What it means, where we get it from, why we even might be looking for it. Yesterday we did three exercises for the waist. We did the turn without moving the feet, we raised the toes and we pushed out the heels. And in so doing, you learn a few moves from Tai Chi from the very beginning of the form, waving hands in clouds. And this is what I'm going to try and get to do today as well. I'm going to introduce a, a posture or two from the form by looking at balance. So the first thing we need to do is consider what we mean by it. Is it just a question of not falling over? Partially, we do want to stay upright. The other is looking at the mind-body balance, about knowing when to turn off and when to turn on, when to work together, when to work separately. So that also comes in with it. We've also looked at breathing and movement as part of balance. So all these things are interconnected. Today we're going to look at three exercises very briefly about balance. And the first is called Stand Like a Flamingo. Now before we do it, though we may be emulating how a flamingo stands, what we're not doing is emulating where a flamingo stands. So bear that in mind, do not practice this exercise in salt marshes, do not stand in puddles, swimming pools or in the middle of the ocean. Not that they do in the middle of the ocean, but you get what I mean. Stay out of water. This exercise is very simple. We put all the weight in one leg, let's stick it in this one, bend the knee very slightly, keep the head up, spine straight, everything else relaxed, and then as you sink down into that leg, let the other foot just come off the floor. Watch from the side, watch that heel. As I sink down, the heel comes off. From that angle, as I sink down, the heel comes off. Just the toes left on the floor. So I've just got to pick up the toe, put it back down again. Very, very simple. How do we maintain that? Keep the knee soft, don't, don't lock it out. If you lock it out, you're just gonna fall over. Don't look down. If you look down, you'll fall over. Why is that? Watch from the side. Here I am, trying to get balanced. Soon as I look down, watch how my weight goes forward. I'm toppling off my center of balance. So keep, avoid looking down. Look straight ahead. I keep telling you, you don't listen. Keep your eyes up. Don't look at the floor. So imagine you've got a chair. You're holding on to a chair or a table, looking straight ahead, all the weight in that leg, bend the other one and then pick it up off the floor. Stick it straight back down. Well done. We're looking at building ligament and tendon strength, not thigh strength, not buttock strength. It's the ligaments and tendons that are going to do the work for us. Push down. As you push, you sink. As you sink, the other leg wants to come up off the floor. Look at me. Don't look at your foot. Don't look at the cat, don't look at any sheep that you might see walking up close. Ignore them all. 
Just focus on what you can see on the screen. Put it down. Now, same side arm as the leg. Push down with the other hand. As this leg comes up, imagine there's a string around it attached from the knee to the wrist. Pick up the wrist, up comes the foot. Drop it down to the floor again. Pick it up, drop it down. Remember that knee is bent, sink down into the ground. Pick it up, take it down. Pick it up, take it down. Congratulations, you have just learned another Tai Chi posture. And it was called, not flamingo this time, another bird. Golden rooster stands on one leg. Another posture you just learned without even trying. That's the way you should learn. Okay, oh, on to exercise two. It's called rotations and it builds from the first exercise. S sit on that leg. Imagine holding on to something. I'll just move back so you can see everything. Now, when you pick up this foot, the ankle, rotate the ankle one way, maybe five or six times, and then rotate it back the other way, five or six times. If you need to rest, put it back down on the floor. If you don't, keep it up. This time the knee. It's a different sort of joint, it's a ball and socket, so we're gonna go forward and back, forward and back. If you need to rest, put it down. If not, keep it up. Now, open out the pelvis, bring it back in. Open out, bring it back in. Now, if you've straightened that other leg, you're gonna find this difficult, because as soon as you open out, you're gonna fall off. So make sure that leg stays bent. And that's those three movements within that second exercise. Rotate the ankle, move the knee backwards and forwards, and open out the pelvis. You can do that six, seven, eight times for each part of the leg, and then swap over to the other leg. Always put your foot down if you think you're gonna lose your balance, because as a general rule, it's better to put your foot down than fall over and land on your face. Just my own personal opinion, my recommendation after 20 years of teaching, don't land on your face if it just requires putting your foot down. Third and final exercise for today is a good one. And it's based on the hours of a clock. That was just to give you an idea of what I mean by clock. Don't think digital, think analog. Imagine you're standing in the middle of a big analog faced clock. Both feet in the center. Now, keep one foot in the center and take the other one, stick it at the top, say 12 o'clock, six o'clock, whatever. Now, imagine, quarter for now, quarter for now, quarter for now, quarter for now. You can see these quarter for now, 15 minute slots all the way around. Sink down into that strong supporting leg, bend the knee, keep your back upright, relax the arms, keep your head up, don't look at the floor. Now, what am I gonna do with this leg? Gonna to start to swivel it a little bit, get a little bit of momentum and flow that we did yesterday. And now I'm gonna pick up that foot and swivel on the ball of the other foot for 15 minutes. Well, the markers for 15 minutes. Using my arms as well. There I go, land. Simple, come back again. There I go. Now I'm gonna carry on. 15 minutes, 15 minutes, 15 minutes called the hours of the clock. Once you're quite confident on both sides with doing 15 minutes, you use your waist, you use your arms, 30 minutes, 30 minutes, fantastic. If you find that not a challenge, what's next? 45, hey, easy peasy, and then Whoa, go round for an hour or two. Well, maybe not two, I'll start to get a bit dizzy then. But that's the idea. Work your way around gradually. Try and keep yourself level and build up that tendon and ligament strength in those legs. That's the secret of balance. Not that there are really any secrets in Tai Chi. Don't believe anyone who says there is, it's all common sense. Ligament strength, tendon strength, 
that's what you need plus softness relaxation breath flow flow is what we did yesterday today is what we've done balance there's lots of scientific evidence about how tai chi helps your balance a lot of tai chi teachers talk about science backing up tai chi but this is the one area that there is a lot of documentation around that if you want to see it follow the link that i've left either up or below or whatever to come to my website and have a look at some of the other resources i've got for doing work at home for tai chi including the beginner's guide pdf that you can download and work in between these video classes which will give you a lot of background and more exercises like these to practice at home in between these superb live sessions so that's it for today tomorrow don't miss tomorrow's exciting episode when Leibniz and I demonstrate the importance of not only what it means coordination but how to spell it too that's tomorrow thanks for sharing thanks for liking do leave a comment let me know you've come by and um, Send it anonymously to enemies. Do what you have to do. Stay safe. Look after yourselves. Thank you very much. See you tomorrow.